Hey, how's it going YouTube? It's me, Aaron Simmer. I'm back of finally another video. I've been on a long hiatus. Uh, time's been kind of frantic lately. Uh, my day's been very busy lately. A lot of work, a lot of holidays, but here we go. In case you all do not know, I am a very big Batman fan. And so I want to do a series of Batman reviews on this channel. And so I'm going to start out with a TV series that I started watching called Gotham. Going into watching Gotham, I thought, okay, here's another Batman show, It'd be pretty cool, but no, actually, it's not about Batman at all. Yes, Bruce Wayne is in it as a child, and the story actually strongly follows around Jim Gordon, you know, Gotham City's future police commissioner. So yeah, Jim Gordon is the main antagonist of the show, but even more so, I feel Gotham, as in the title of the show, is more so even just an origin story of Gotham City itself, often featuring many of the famous villains we've come to know throughout the city and how they became who they are when Batman becomes the Batman. Batman! Especially Oswald Cobblepot, otherwise known as the Penguin who they focus on for extreme periods of time throughout the show, which I was fine with. I thought the character was portrayed excellently by Robin Taylor. The Penguin varies quite a bit from the comics that we've all come to know and love, the character, but I felt the changes were done in a very well and entertaining fashion. All I wanted was a little respect. I will get into more on how him and other characters varied throughout the show from the comics in the spoiler section of this review. And I just gotta say, great casting on this show. The performances across the board were amazing. And do not worry, Gotham does feature a very young Bruce Wayne, who is supposed to become the Batman, and his butler, Alfred Pennyworth, who I really liked that casting as well. I felt he did a really good job. And he's more so than just his butler, because Bruce is so young. He's like a mentor to him, of sorts, a guardian. I am your guardian, Master Bruce. And it is my job to protect you. This show very strongly, though, centers around Bruce being more of a coming-of-age story than him being the Batman. What I really love, particularly about Gotham, is it gives you a feel for the city itself and its inhabitants. It gives you a certain bond and connection to everything that's going on. I also found myself becoming very attached with the villains of this show as well. Like the Penguin and the Riddler both have very interesting story arcs. And this show doesn't only focus on Bruce Wayne and James Gordon. It spends a lot of episodes, full episodes even, focusing on the villains and what's going on in their lives and their plots and furthering their ambitions and telling you the story of how they became who they are in the Batman. This is something I greatly enjoyed as a fan of Batman and reading the comics and most all movies out there I've seen of some sorts before. But someone that's completely unknown to Batman and doesn't know who the villains are or anything may have a slightly less enjoyment of this show because they give you very subtle hints and just names and events and you're like, I think that might be that villain or that might be this person throughout Gotham and half the fun of the show is figuring out who is supposed to be who and sometimes it's given to you later on, other times they never really tell you who they're supposed to be. So that, to me, is half the fun of the show, is figuring out who was who, kind of a fan service of bits. Also, I gotta say, to the comic purists, they changed a lot of things about the character dynamics and most of the characters in the show. Even James Gordon is different from the comics. So someone who is a comic purist is like, oh man. You know, someone that's like, oh, they changed this, I don't like this, this is terrible, I'm stop watching. So comic purists may not enjoy this show as much either because they'll be so triggered by the fact that it's completely different from the comics. I personally feel, however, the show and its content respects the characters and the events within the comics as a whole. The changes done to the various characters and villains throughout the show. Some of these changes were slight, some of them major. They even invented an entire new villain and threw her into the show. In large part, I felt most of these changes were intriguing and well done. They're not some of those changes where like, what the heck, why did they change this? This is no sense. <coughs> Death note. <coughs> Sorry. Still, even if you are unfamiliar with Gotham and the plot of Batman, I think you'll find the show enjoyable. Uh, it has a really good casting, good characters, good acting, good plot. It's probably more of just a crime thriller to somebody that doesn't know Batman. 
it may even pique your interest and want to watch more Batman and join the light side. But I just feel those who are familiar with Batman and Gotham and the universe like I am will get even more out of the show. You'll love it, unless you're a comic purist. I will have to give Gotham an A with a fanboy asterisk next to my grade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you're one of the people that have never seen Gotham, go watch it, then come back and finish this review, because now we are going to get into some spoilers of the show. Some minor, some major. Okay, are you gone? Good. Now, for those of you that are still with me, I gotta talk about Jerome, who to many, including me, believe is the Joker. This is never confirmed in the show, but I have a very strong feeling it is. Cameron Monaghan, I probably butchered your name, I'm sorry, but you gave an amazing performance in this show. I think whenever the next Joker, Batman movie, whenever that is, he should be casted as the Joker, please. Forget Jared Leto and the Suicide Squad and rumored Leonardo DiCaprio for a Joker solo film. No, give us this guy. Alright, now let's get into Cobblepot, the Penguin who has changed very much from the comics. However, as I stated, I have greatly enjoyed Robin Taylor's take on this character, portraying him in the show. Sure, he isn't the short, well-rounded penguin we all know, but I found his character great regardless. He is less calculated and more impulsed in this than he is in the comics, but I still feel a hint of intelligence with him still, like he knows what he's doing in a kind of crazy way. Oh, you. So smart. Always one step ahead. <laughs> Alright, now I gotta talk about Ivy, aka Poison Ivy, in this show. And the way they did her character actually bugged me the most of everything I've seen on Gotham. I'm glad Gotham <clears throat> took the route they did in Season 3 to make her more the seductress we all know from the comics. But... They should have done it initially, just as it is. I just wished it would have happened in a better manner in the show. Just the entire concept of, oh, I was this little girl, and then this guy from the lab used his aging power on me, and he happened to age me just right, and then I happened to fall down a gutter to be saved, because otherwise I would have aged completely and died. But instead, I aged perfectly to my attractive adult self. And just this whole type of thing that happened in this season, it's like, really? I don't know. I know the writers of this show are ingenious and capable of way better than that. I felt really ripped off watching that. Everything about her character other than that is good. I hope they continue to develop her going forward, but yeah, the way they did the whole falling down thing just annoyed the crap out of me. Edward Nigma, the Riddler. Portrayed by Corey Smith, who I think does a really good job as a Riddler. He started out, you know, as... What was he? Like the crime analyst in the lab for the Gotham police and eventually evolves into what he becomes, the Riddler. Definitely true to his constant riddles and his insanity. However, in Gotham he seems way more ingenious and just mastermind than he does in the comics. That's the one thing that I would nitpick at. Speaking of genius, let's talk about Hugo Strange, played by B.D. Wong. Amazing casting as Strange. He had the etiquette, the walk, you know, the way he talked, the look, everything about it was completely just perfect. His character was definitely the closest of everything in the show to the comic resemblance. I can't picture someone else playing Strange now that I've seen him on screen, honestly. Now I gotta touch on a few more main characters. We'll start with Selena Kyle, Catwoman. She also is kind of a coming-of-age story like Bruce, and her and Bruce already start their kind of weird relationship they have like they do in, you know, later on when he's an adult. But from the moment you see her on screen, you're like, yep, that's definitely Catwoman. The way she's athletic, jumps around, balances, she is a thief. Alright, now time for the hero, the main antagonist of the show, James Gordon. He definitely differs from his comic counterpart. He definitely crosses the line whenever he needs to in this show, often murdering people, lying to his superiors to cover up his murder, etc. You get the idea. However, I kind of liked the new edgy take on James Gordon compared to the comics in this show. I feel he makes the perfect counterpart to Bruce Wayne, the Batman, what he stands for. He's kind of the polar opposite, but still lawful. He still overall is a good person, is trying to do the right thing, is trying to clean up Gotham, I believe. Some other people I know don't agree with that. And finally, let's touch a little bit on Bruce Wayne, the Batman. 
I gotta say, in Gotham, he does not seem like the badass, ass-kicking vigilante that we all know. Often unable to, get to defend himself, gets kidnapped constantly, always needing help. Early on, I didn't really like their betrayal as of Bruce, but I feel it's improved over the seasons, especially ending season three, going into season four. I think we might see him become more what we know him to be. Bruce's whole arc in Gotham, like I said earlier, is kind of just a coming-of-age teen drama. It's really what it is. But yes, there are many more characters in this show, and I could go on and on and on explaining all of them, but in this video would be over an hour long, so I'm going to end it there. Um, there probably will be multiple more seasons of Gotham, so as more seasons come out, I'll probably make another review video like this. Hope you enjoyed me ranting on for the last few minutes. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please give the thumbs up. It helps a ton for people like me without any subscribers. And if you enjoyed my content, please subscribe and come back. I will try and post more often, I promise. I do show reviews like this. I do horror movie reviews. I do video game play, whatever video games I'm playing at the time. I don't play the latest stuff, you know. I just play whatever I feel like playing. That's my thing. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all again tomorrow. Aaron Simmer, signing out.